Good Sunday morning, church, August 16th. We're very glad you've joined us today. Our drive-in service continues live on Sundays at 9 a.m. in the Upper Church parking lot. Now, this is a live service as similar as possible to the service if it would have been held inside the church auditorium. For instance, Mark is there leading the song service, Randy's there bringing us the message, and one of the elders leads the communion service. Everyone's there live and in person, including you. As you enter the church parking lot, an elder will give everyone in your car an individually prepackaged communion with the bread and the juice. So come join your church family as we follow the socially distant rules to stay safe. Thanks to your generous support, the church delivered food, games, school supplies, and essentials to the Crittenton kids last Tuesday, along with lots of gift cards to the local restaurants. The kids like those the most. Kids Experience is today at 11 a.m. It's available on social media, and parent guides are on the website. The Zoom Hebrew Bible Studies continues Wednesday afternoons at 6. The youth group meets at Tri-City Park in Placentia on Wednesdays at 5. Now there's going to be a memorial service for Dot Bar on Tuesday, August 25th at 6 o'clock in the upper parking lot at the church. If you know friends in the community outside of our church family who may want to attend, please, please invite them. If you have a blankie that Dot made for you, please send to Brenda's church email a picture of you with the blankie. Brenda's going to make a create and create a memorial slideshow on our church Facebook page. Now, Brenda's going to provide a link to that video once it's available. And lastly, if you'd like a moment at the microphone at the memorial to say a few words, please let Brenda know ahead of time for planning purposes. A new program called Homework Hangout begins in September. Tuesdays will be Zoom tutoring and Thursdays will be the in-person homework help. The youth group will switch their meetings from Thursday to Wednesday evenings, and more details are coming soon on that. If you would like to support our church, you can mail your check to the church office, you can drop it off at the church by calling Brenda first to make sure she's there, or you can give online directly through your bank personal checking account. And today, Lori and Tudo Diaz are celebrating 40 years of wedding bliss. May I say Feliz Aniversario. Happy anniversary. Thanks again for joining us. We do miss you all so very much. Take care. God bless. Adios. Unto thee, O Lord. Unto thee, O Lord. Do I lift up my soul. Do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O Lord. Unto do I lift up my soul? Do I lift up my soul? Oh my God. Oh my God. I trust in thee. I trust in thee. Let, Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. They let none that way.
Father's heart, we will find such blessed assurance in the presence of the Lord. Cover me, Lord, with your Upon the return from surveying the Promised Land, the scripture in the book of Numbers notes that Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up there with him said, we cannot attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are giants. A clear contrast between faith and doubt. The obstacles that they saw were the same. Their fears were legitimate. Their apprehension was well founded. Yet their response to move toward God's promise could not have been more dissonant. Even though they were God's chosen people, their purpose disintegrated from doubt. A doubt that brought into question their willingness to be at peace with God's Word. C. 
seeds of doubt were sown in the hearts and minds of the Israelites. Those seeds sprouted roots as it is in our life's journey. There are those who seek to sow doubt as we move forward. Many of us have been told for so long to be doubtful and cynical and fearful. They are deliberate attempts to create discord in our hearts. But the decision to allow that seed to sprout rests on our faith, on our willingness to move toward God's promise. In Hebrews chapter 11, the scripture notes that faith is a substance, things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It was faith that moved that young boy to slay a giant named Goliath. It was faith that moved a woman who had bled for years to touch Christ's cloak in a mass crowd. And it was faith that moved a man nailed to a cross next to Christ to cry out and ask to be recognized. The obstacles that we face are legitimate and to us insurmountable. Our fears deplete our energies, our sorrows catapult us into despair. Our outlook appears bleak. We are, after all, human. Feelings are meant to be felt. But even then, there's no doubt in our response to move toward God. The challenges that tomorrow will bring may be the greatest of our lifetime. But we must remember that in years past when we were tested, we refused to let our journey end. So that if we should fall, by faith we will stand, knowing that he will sustain us. If we are anguished, by faith we will cry out, knowing that he will console us. If we are desolate, by faith we will reach out, knowing that he will open doors of peace, tranquility. In the book of Matthew, Christ notes that we would do well having the faith of a mustard seed. It was, after all, what Caleb tried to relay to the Israelites in his plea to take that land. That in spite of the legitimate obstacles they faced, that in spite of the fears that provoked panic in their hearts, that in spite of the uncertainty that hovered all around them, he knew that God would provide a way, that he would open a door, that he would take care of what they saw as impossible. And so it is that by faith we move toward God's promise, rejecting those seeds of doubt and living by the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing your son into this world so that he is a bridge to you. We ask that you bless us and keep us. We ask that you be with us always. We ask that those who are participating of this communion do it in a manner that is worthy in your sight. In Christ's name, amen. Again, Lord, we, we pray and we ask and we are thankful. We thank you for, again, bringing your Son who shed his blood for our sake. We ask that we do this again in a manner that is 
worthy to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Enjoy your week. God bless you. Good morning, Sunny Hills Church, and welcome all of our friends and visitors. Uh, we're glad you're here. Today I want to start a new series of lessons based on the fruit of the Spirit. And I think it's really important that we keep in mind what the fruit of the Spirit is. Because this is, this is the fruit God wants to bear in our lives to other people. He wants to display his wisdom through the church. And especially the church as his temple, uh, corporately, but also each individual one of us, we, we are a temple of God. Uh, our bodies are a temple of his Holy Spirit. He lives in us. And, and, and so as we are in the world, God wants his presence to be noticeable in us. And it's noticed especially through the fruit produced by his spirit. And so we, we need to keep in mind what that is. And, and uh, there's a song that uh, I have already tried on a previous tape to sing to you. And it's not going to happen. <laughs> but I'll speak it to you. And it says this, and you can learn the song this way. The fruit of the spirits, not a banana. nuh -uh. The fruit of the spirits, not a banana. nuh -uh. If you're a banana, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit. Because the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, one more. You can teach it to your kids. I'm still not going to sing it. And you're happy about that. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit's not a tangerine. Know what I mean? The fruit of the Spirit's not a tangerine. Know what I mean? If you're a tangerine, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit because the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So there it is. That's the best I could do. I tried differently. <laughs> you did not want that. But, but this is how we can learn the fruit of the Spirit. We can sing it. We can have it in our minds. It's important that we do that uh, because we need to be aware of what God is doing through the Spirit. Now, when we think about the fruit of the Spirit, and they're in Galatians chapter 5, we need to remember that he talks about it as the fruit of the Spirit. He, he's not talking about things that, uh, like commandments that we're supposed to do. He's not saying you better do these things, you know, or, or, or else. Uh, or you have to do these things to be a Christian. It's not like he's saying you have to do it uh, because this is not what you do. This is something that God does through his spirit in you or in me. And so listen to what he says. Um, in verse 19, Galatians 5, 19, he says, Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So there's the works of the flesh. But then he says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there's no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So there's a contrast Paul is drawing between the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. And so just notice he doesn't say, here's the works of the flesh, but here's the works of a good Christian. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say, uh, here's what you have to do to be a good Christian. We just Sometimes we seem to boil it all down to those kinds of ways of thinking, but this is not a list of things you must do. And, and if you think about it, you, it makes sense. For instance, uh, one of the fruits of the Spirit, one of the, an aspect of the fruit of the Spirit is patience, or let's say peace. Now, you, you can be commanded to have peace. You, either you have peace or you don't. He cannot say, okay, have peace. And if you don't have peace, you can say, okay, uh, now because he told me to, I'm going to have peace. <laughs> peace comes from the Spirit of God in an understanding of who God is, how he loves us, the forgiveness he's given us, the power he's given us to live uh, uh, according, to, according to Jesus. That's where peace comes from. 
uh, that, that we don't have to worry about being judged by anyone. We don't have to worry about people even killing us because God's got all that under control. And he's got something amazing that I don't understand, but I believe Jesus, he's got something prepared for us even better. Paul tells us that. So, so peace is a fruit of the Spirit that you, you can't just do. And, and so that's, that's what we have to understand. Here's the things, here's the works of the flesh, but, but these other things, these are not the works of man. They're not even the fruit of man. It is the fruit of the Spirit. It is what the Spirit can bring forth in our lives. Now, that doesn't mean there's nothing we can do. It doesn't mean there's nothing we do. We don't just sit there and wait for this stuff to happen. There are things we can do. Jesus said, make a tree good and its fruit will be good. He said that. Now, somebody, an author, a poet, I think said, only God can make a tree. I should know who that is. I never remember anything. Only God can make a tree. So what does Jesus mean? Make a tree. Good. And his fruit will be good. He's not talking about making a tree. He's talking about, like, if you said to a, a arborist, I would say a farmer, right? A, somebody who has orchards. Uh, if you, uh, he said, make this tree good. So you already got the tree. And maybe it's not really bearing any fruit. Well, how would he make it good? Well, he would change things about it. Uh, perhaps it's not getting a, enough water. Maybe the soil is worn out, has no nutrients in it. Uh, so he, he can make sure there's enough water. He can add mulch or compost to the soil and uh, aerate it or, or you know, fertilize it. Whatever has to be done, you, you can do that to make it better. Um, and then and then that would, that would make the tree uh, uh, more successful in the production of fruit. It's possible that Paul may have had Psalm 1 in mind when he talked about this contrast between the works of the flesh and wickedness and then this other thing, the fruit of the Spirit, sort of, you know, talking about sort of the tree and fruit kind of mentality. Listen to Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the Lord. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its seasons, and its leaf does not wither. In, uh, in all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. So, so here's the contrast drawn. Forgive my dog. Javi, here's the contrast drawn between the way of the wicked and the way of the righteous. And as he talks about the way of the righteous, he's talking about someone who's like a tree planted by the water, uh, its roots deeply embedded in that rich soil and, and absorbing all those nutrients and that water and, 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 and that way it can flourish. And then, and then the other ones, well, they're, they're like out there in the desert drying up with the chaff or something. But, but if we look at what he's, how he says you can be like those guys, like the tree, he says, here's what a person like that does. They don't fill their, their lives with the influence of those rebellious, wicked people. They don't allow those influences to be what makes up their uh, identity and their being, their personality, their, their will, their decision. They, they're not absorbing in their roots all of that stuff. But instead, his delight is in the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. That's something we can do. We, we don't produce the fruit, but we can help make the tree good by making sure it's, it's planted in good soil and making sure we're doing everything we can to provide the water. And, and this, is, this is what we get from the Word of God, from spending time with the Word of God, with God, in prayer, of, of meditating on His Word, fixing our eyes on Jesus, thinking about who He is and who He, who he wants us to be. All of that, filling our lives with the, the influence of God just like a tree absorbing through the roots. That's, that's, what, that's something we can do. We can, we can be very proactive in, in our reaching out in our roots and absorbing all those good nutrients by being in the Word and being with God and being in prayer and by doing things like Jesus, by serving and things like that, good things, uh, following in his steps. But there's one more thing we can do, which goes along those lines. Going back to Galatians, 
I should have marked it really, but going back to Galatians chapter five, he says, and I read this, he says, uh, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Not only are we choosing to plant our roots in those things that have to do with, with godliness, the, the word of God and, and with the story of God and, and then with Jesus and who we know he is and, and, and rooting ourselves in the things he did and, and just kind of growing in that soil. We, we need to do that. But on the other side, we need to put up a fight. He says, crucifying those passions of the flesh, crucifying those things that would drag us into those other influences and those other powers that want to fill our lives. And so, so those are some things we can do um, to, so that we're able to be a, a tree healthy enough for God's spirit to bear his fruit. Okay? So, so that's something about the fruit of the spirit there. That's the setup. Now, for a moment, I, uh, a few moments, I want to talk about the first fruit of the spirit. And, uh, and next week, I want to talk more about love, the first fruit of the spirit. Um, so this is part A and part B, sort of, of this one aspect of the fruit of the spirit. Um, but I want to say that as I talk about the fruit of the spirit, um, mostly I want to focus on what it looks like when produced by God. Uh, in history toward humanity. What what does it look like when God bears this fruit of the Spirit uh, from him to us? Because when we think about when God says the fruit of the Spirit is love, and we think about what love would look like, our idea of love is not always the same thing as God's idea of love. When we say, I love something, it, it may not be the same thing as when God says he loves us. And so whatever that fruit of the Spirit is, it needs to be his type <laughs> Love, love. His meaning and not ours. So that's what I want to investigate further. And so let's just begin by talking about that a little bit, just understanding love. Uh, I love... I love pizza. I love pizza. And I love walking on the beach, the wet sand part with my wife uh, along along the, the ocean. I love that. I love it. I love it when I hit a golf ball right in that sweet spot. And it, it effortlessly, the club just effortlessly hits that ball and it sails up and exactly where I intended it to go. That I mean, that's just beautiful. If, if you've ever played golf and you've done that, you know, it just feels right. It feels so good. I love it. I love it. So many things I love. I love, I'm a savory guy. I love chips and uh, dip, <laughs> but I also love chocolate, some chocolate. I love this chocolate. This is Lindor Caramel, Irresistibly Smooth Caramel Milk Chocolate Truffles. I love this chocolate. Um, I want to show you why I love this chocolate. It's this yummy ball of chocolatey goodness filled with some creamy caramel center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Not going to be able to talk for a while. Mm. Mm. I drink some water. I love that. Oh, that's so good. Still, my whole mouth is filled with chocolatey, yummy flavor. It's amazing. I love it. I love it. There's something that all of these things have in common that I mentioned. I, I said I love this chocolate, and I do. And I love walking on the beach with my wife. And I love um, that hitting that golf ball, that sweet spot, I love that. I love pizza. There's something about all these things I'm saying I love. Did you see why, if you had to guess why I love that chocolate, what would you guess? You, you could probably tell. I love that chocolate because of all of the enjoyment that it brings to me. I love that chocolate because, oh, it just, it tastes so good. Now, I love walking on the beach with my wife along the ocean and the wet sand. I just love taking that stroll. It makes me feel just peaceful and loved and, 
and I just feel so good. I love the ocean air there, and it's just beautiful. I love it. I proposed to her at the beach uh, in a nice restaurant right over the water breaking, but I love that. I love that golf sweet spot. It makes me feel like I could play golf. <laughs> makes me feel like I, I can do it. Uh, I love pizza because I love that cheesy, you know, uh, pepperoni, oily, horrible, but delicious flavor. I love it. But I, all those things I'm saying I love, the love, the, the, the whole energy of that love has to do with me. How all of that comes to me my experience and so that that's what we mean when we say oh i love that it it, it it often means this this way but it's different when god uh, loves there's a there's a passage in um, in ezekiel it's it's a hard passage to read because it's a terrible scene um it's, it's, it's the way God depicts uh, how he found Israel and what he did for Israel because they, they just weren't treating him right. And, and so he says in chapter 16, verse 2, Son of man, make known to Jerusalem her abominations and say, Thus saith the Lord God to Jerusalem, Your origin and your birth are of the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. And as for your birth, on the day you were born, your cord was not cut nor were you washed with water to cleanse you, nor rubbed with salt, nor wrapped in swaddling clothes. No, I pitied you to do any of these things to you out of compassion for you, but you were cast out on the open field, for you were abhorred on the day that you were born. And when I passed by you, I saw you wallowing in your blood, and I said to you, live. I said to you, in your blood, live. I Live, I made you flourish like a plant of the field. And you grew up and became tall and arrived at full adornment. And it goes on with some PG-13 stuff. But he goes down in verse 14 to say, And your renown went forth among the nations because of your beauty. For it was perfect through the splendor that I had bestowed on you, declares the Lord. God says, when you were born, nobody loved you. Nobody cared about you. You were tossed out. This is just an imagery about how Israel. And it's like, you were nobody. You were nothing. You were nowhere. And, and I brought all of this to you. I brought you glory. I brought you uh, uh, inheritance and, 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 a, and to be a tribe and to be blessed. I, I did all that for you. So here's, here's the love of God. When God loved that, that Israel in that way, it wasn't anything... It wasn't like, oh, oh, uh, this is so uh, beautiful. This is so wonderful. What, do, what does God get out of this when he takes it upon himself to love and show compassion in this scene, which is, you know, an illustration of sort of how he brought about Israel. But, but notice what the love of God is in that scene. Which direction does it go? Is it from the aborted baby or cast out baby toward uh, toward God? Is, is that the energy? Like God gets something out of it? Or is it God, is it God, well, now I'm in a position, is it God raining down his love toward somebody completely unworthy of it, like me? That's, that's the nature of the love of God. We, if, if we've experienced this love at all, and I think some of us probably have, it would be like in raising our children. You know, I, I have three awesome daughters, Every one of them got through their teenage years way better than I did, and I'm very proud of all three of them. Uh, I love them, and they're doing they're doing great. Um, but like, I could take any one of them and, and talk about wherever there might have been some difficulties. But like Tabitha, there Tabitha has a, a, a medical condition that has landed her in the hospital. We just got out of the hospital the other day, uh, but for most of her life, uh, it's landed her in the hospital uh, every three months, and uh, sometimes. We would be, uh, after a long, busy day, uh, maybe a lot of other things going on, and, and we're just worn out, and, and for whatever reason, we're up late trying to finish up the day, and it might get to midnight or after midnight, and, and then Tabitha goes to an episode, and, and she'll dehydrate if we don't take her to the emergency room and get her into the hospital. We don't want to do that. 
we're tired. We want to go to sleep. There are times when we've argued with her. Can you just go to sleep and, and let us let us get some rest? One time we drove back, I think from Tahoe with Warren and Doug's uh, camp. One of the camps that they did, I, I can't remember where it was. I think it was Tahoe, but we drove all the way back. We got home in the middle of the night and we were wiped out and to have the win the episode. And we had to go, I think that time we were going to CHLA and it was a further drive, but they had a specialist and we wanted her to be able to see the specialist. And we, it was not a warm fuzzy for us to do that. It, we weren't doing it because it, it, it was full of chocolatey goodness for us. What we did in love for Tabitha was because it's what she needed. And we care about her. We love her. We're, we don't want her to suffer. We don't want her to be hurting. And so, so our love went out from us to Tabitha. Now, of course, we get something out of that because she's our daughter and we love her and we want to, you know. But in the time, in the moment, when those things are happening, there's lots of them. And, and you probably had them with your own children but, or wherever. But there's lots of times where loving people hurts. <laughs> it's not a warm fuzzy. It's not hitting the golf ball in the sweet spot. It's not a walk on the beach. It's not one of these chocolates. It's, it hurts but there's still love and there's still actions of love, um, motivations of love, whatever has to be done because we care, we love. This is what I want to talk about, about how God loves us. We'll talk more about it next week. That's what I want to talk about. I want to focus on the way God loves because when we understand his love for us, we're better open to the possibility that the Holy Spirit can bring about that love in us to others. To people who don't bring warm fuzzies to us. <laughs> to get away, to get out of the me, me, me mentality and cause God's love to us to become our love to others with no strings attached. And I love, uh, I, uh, just reporting, uh, this week I love that Sunny Hills Church of Christ was able to uh, bless the Crittenden Foster uh, Care Services, um, who take care of many, I think it's 50 right now, uh, foster kids. Uh, and we were, we were able, through, uh, through the whole church-wide, uh, and Mari set it up, and, and whoever else, I'm sorry if I don't remember everyone involved, but, but uh, Chill and Mari got together and, and made this happen, uh, got the whole church involved, and, and just rained down blessings of school supplies and... Uh, baby needs because some of the foster kids have babies even though they're young. Um, uh, back to school stuff and, and, and games and just all kinds of blessings. And they just, uh, Steve Payton took some over and Terry and also um, Kent Sunman uh, took another load over. But they got all of that over to them and we were just blessed to give all that. And then another thing in honor of our own blanky lady, Dot Barr, who just passed away recently, uh, she had she served foster kids uh, just all her life in an amazing way, uh, homemade quilts and and blankies and all kinds of products and gifts for for foster kids and others who, in, who needed some help and some love. And in honor of that, uh, Jill and I were able to take over. Uh, Pat, I think, produced a lot of this or most of it, uh, but with probably others helped to do it too. I'm sure. But Pat Beck, uh, but her and Jill got together to make this happen. I guess. But I, I was dragged in to help make this happen. So Jill and I dropped off 30 bags, most of them like homemade bags uh, with handmade quilts in them, handmade bags, handmade quilts in them, handmade pillows and different goodies. And each bag is sort of thematic. Uh, maybe it's sports or maybe it's trains or uh, whatever girly stuff is. I can't remember. <laughs> but, but just all these bags and three bins full of Beanie Babies. Uh, so that's a separate thing, but but all of that just blessing these foster kids. Th this is no strings attached. We just want them to know we love them and we want to help them love on these kids. This is this is what we love to see. We love to see the, the Sunny Hills mission, which is to love and serve. And if we really understood what to love meant, to say to serve is redundant. <laughs> because to love the way God loves is to love in service and to be available to help others who, who are, unfor are less fortunate, who are hurting, uh, to recognize and have compassion, like God has had compassion on us. And uh, 
I hope that you have experienced this love of God. I hope that your life has been moved by God's shower of love on you. God so loved the world. Which world? The sinful world. A world full of people like you and me. God so loved that world so that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. That's how God loves. He loves by giving. He, God so loved the world, he gave. And I hope you've experienced that love. And if you want to know more about uh, getting involved in your faith or making a commitment to Jesus or finding a way to serve in community, uh, we'd love to hear from you. You could email me, Randy Elliott, R-A-N-D-Y-E-L-L-I-O-T-T, -L -L at shcoc.org. That's the initials of Sunny Hills Church of Christ.org. And um, we'd love to talk with you and, um, and find out how we can help you uh, increase your faith or get to know God better or, or to serve him better. But um, thank you for being with us. We love you and God bless. Bye-bye. <music>